My name is Jacob. I run the video department at Internachi. That is the International Association of Certified Home Inspectors. I basically create educational and promotional content for our members. Um, and today we are live on site for a virtual home inspection with Julie Irk, CPI, with Empowered Home Inspections. Uh, we are out here in Arvada, Colorado. It is a beautiful day. And basically, you are around, if you are in Colorado and uh, want to do one of these virtual inspections with us, you are welcome to get in touch with me at jacob at internachi.org. You can email me there. We are always looking, we're, we're looking to expand this kind of webinar with uh, some of our members. So feel free to reach out to me if you're in the Colorado area. We will take breaks for questions, but if you have one that, that, that um, you wanna ask um, during the inspection, just feel free to ask you at the Q&A and I'll try to interject it as we go along. And why don't we get started? So let me introduce you to Julie Eric. Hi, thank you, Jacob. Uh, welcome everyone. We will be inspecting this house. It is a four bed, two and a half bath built in 1962. So um, this house would typically take approximately two and a half hours to inspect. We're going to do this HGTV style because we don't have that much time. So let's get started with the roof. Hello, it's Julie with Empowered Home Inspections. We're here to do the inspection and we're going to start with the exterior. Thank you. Always announced, even though they're not home, someone could be home. You never know. So it's always a good idea to announce that you're here. And now we can get started. As I'm walking to do the roof inspection, I'm also noticing the walkway and I'm making notes to the extension, extenuous crack. And we'll, we'll note that in our report. Okay, I've got my ladder already set up. Three is the magic number. Make sure you have three rungs above the roof surface so it's most safe, okay? Here we go. Ah, got some scat going on there. Tells me the uh, raccoons are getting up here. Um, probably the tree. It's touching the uh, roof surface here, so I would recommend the tree gets trimmed back. Um, just going to take a quick walk along the surface to make sure it's good. Yeah, we're going to step over the ridge vent. Don't want to cause any damage there. Oh, and I do see a nail pop here. I would recommend that gets sealed. Everything looks good. I always give these guys a shake just to make sure the seals are good around these boots. Um, we do have an air swap here, so I'll just take a quick look at that. Everything seems to be fine. And what is that exactly? This is a swamp puller. Um, and we'll start that up later and, and test it. But everything in here seems to be fine. There's water and it looks like it's being used. So we know it's okay to test that. Okay. Here's the bathroom too. We're gonna check this boot real quick. If you come up to the edge of the roof, always come forward. Never go back or sideways if you're comfortable, but always forward because you're going to typically, you're going to want to fall backwards. It's just safer that way. You want to take feathers and we can lean over and take pictures. Um, today, this is again, we're shortening this up. They look good. A lot of times they have debris and they're dirty. They look pretty good. Um, that's looking good. Let's take a look at the chimney real quick. And I can see why this uh, has been screened off, all the scat from the raccoons. Uh, I would recommend these really should have spark arresters, should have a cap on it. Um, be down in there. It's pretty all right. We'll get a closer look too when we go inside the house. Um, but that might be my recommendation for that. Uh, you don't want leaves to settle on here and cause issues. So there's not a, a lot of that going on right now in, in this particular house. All right, and we're gonna come down here, take a look at the dormers. Ah, 
there, the seal looks loose to me, so I'll recommend this gets resealed. Okay. Flashing looks good. Flashing looks really good along here. Today, we have a cap. Move along. <laughs> so we have. Oh, this one is really loose. I don't want to give a lot of force on this. I just want to tap it just to check it, and I can tell it's pretty loose. So we're going to recommend that gets sealed as well. And flashing looks good. Everything else looks good on there. I think that's going to complete the roof. But uh, all right, so work our way back down. Careful as we go. You notice I clamped my ladder. Please always clamp your ladder. Safety first. All right, hand her on down to me, friend. All right, we're looking at the windows of the garage here and under the eaves. And then Sean asks, uh, should you inspect the electrical mass? Uh, I did take a look at that, yes. Um, what I'm looking for uh, is to make sure it's secured properly. And if they're, um, you know, if, if the drip, the Drip loops look good and everything else that looks good from there. I'll look at it again too when we do the electrical. Okay. Okay, hey, just looking at the bricks, the siding, the eaves, the fascia board, better than, oh, and I noticed the downspout over here. It does have a splash block, but I would recommend an extension on that one to go a minimum another another three feet on the downspout. Okay, yeah, looking at the patio, and I do see a crack line here. I'll recommend that gets sealed. Again, this house was built in '62, so at this time, I don't think that movement, even though that is newer, I would say, I will move right along. Windows look all right. <laughs> Again, there's a splash block here that's pretty damaged. I would recommend an extension on this gutter. I'd take a picture at an angle right here so that I can get this part of the siding and that part of the siding and make notes on in my report what type of siding it is according to my standards of practice. I need to note that. Um, something uh, I'm looking at also is, um, like I said, the fascia board. I'm looking at the flashing and the roof. On my report, I will note that it is um, asphalt um, shingles. So. Uh, I also, in my report, will have to document, according to our standards of practice, where the gas meter is located. So I'll take a picture of that and know where that is. Uh, I'm kind of looking at the window here. It's covered. If I can move this, just kind of take a peek. We don't take any of these off or anything like that. We just want to look at them. Freezing. Okay. And another one here. Just going to take a quick look. This one's nice, newer, so I can kind of see through it. Um, that's good. Just looking at the um, the window well, making sure it, it, it's not rusted out or falling in, into the window. Um, the scutter downspout looks good. We'll check the beat. The state sticks. We're going to note that in our report. Uh, we don't have to inspect the fences according to our standards of practice. So I just note that in my report that if the fence is against the home, we do inspect that, but otherwise we don't necessarily inspect the rest of the fence. Greg, unfortunately, uh, the for, the LTE connection out here is, isn't is great, but uh, I am connected to the Wi-Fi. So I think when we get or closer to the house, the pixelation should go away. Okay. This tree is too close to the foundation. I'm gonna document that. I'll even come over to the side here and take a picture and just say this tree is touching the foundation that um, can compromise the foundation. I would recommend that be um, corrected. Sean asks, are the weep holes on the brick veneer below grade? Um, we, this is not a veneer. This is actually brick. So on the front. On the brick, oh, okay. On the front, you mean? Um, I'll look at that. I'm not sure I need, uh, was that on the front? Well, yeah. Sean? Yeah. Uh, yeah, they are. Okay. On the front, they are, but not, yeah, this is actual brick. So, okay. Um, good question. So, um, this is sealed. This is set up good. This is uh, a nice deck. It looks like the supports are all on concrete and they've got the appropriate attachments. 
Uh, this is less than 30 inches, so uh, they don't really have to have this guard on here, but it's good that they do. That's a safety feature. Uh, the only thing I would note about this is that, you know, we like to see four inches, okay, in between each spindle. And so I would recommend they add spindles to accommodate for that added safety feature there. Okay. Around, looking at the rest of it looks good. Uh, we're going to step up. Watch your step, please. This step looks inconsistent. We're going to note that it's not consistent um, and recommend correction for that. Uh, the rest of the deck looks pretty good. We'll note that it is a wood deck in my report and that um, we don't need maintenance. I see a tripping hazard here. I'll take a picture of that and note that as well. Um, again, I'm kind of looking at other things. Taking a second look, we're looking at the mask and um, kind of tall. I wonder if it shouldn't have more support. I might, I might research that. Um, for now, this house has been this way for who knows how long, so I'm not going to worry about that. Okay. Um, this is the electrical panel, and I neglected to grab my bag, but. Um, so do you want to wrap around and yeah, let's, uh, let's, wrap, let's wrap around. We'll come back to this panel. Okay. I'm going to leave it right here for just a minute. Okay. Okay. Let's, we'll wrap around. Great idea. Um, looking at this again, can't really see anything and that's okay. Um, we we'll just noted as such. Uh, we have another date here. Would you like to test the date? I'll have to note that date is not working. So I'll put that in my report. Coming in here. As I'm coming in here, I'm noticing the cracks on the floor and I, on the concrete, and I'll note that in the report. Um, how are we all doing? Whoa. Oh, whoa. Hold on, hold Wait, on. that is a. Hold on. <laughs> this is definitely not okay. So, this is missing its support. Um, this needs to be tied down um, to the concrete. So, we'll note that in our report. Yeah, we do have a question about uh, on the deck. Did we notice a GFCI outlet that is weatherproof? Did you see one back there? Uh, no, no. But I'm going to look when I get my bag. Okay, great. Time. Yeah, Thank we'll you. go back to the deck. That's a good question. There's one back here, but um, that's a good question because this is uh, old. Uh -huh. You know, a lot of the GFCI was not a thing then. So when you run into homes that don't have that, Oh, good. We're just heading back. So there, the, there's see no receptacles back here. I think that's because they're around the corner. There is one on the outside, but it's around the corner. So no receptacles back here. Um, we're going to get back to the electrical panel. This is a stab lock Federal Pacific panel. Um, at one time, they kind of went through some legal issues. The breakers like to um, spark and cause a, f a fire because they don't actually pop like they're supposed to pop. Instead, they will arc. Uh, so these were considered unsafe. Um, you know, that was in the 80s. They never really resolved that to be a complete recall on these. As some people will say, from my research, I haven't found where there's an actual recall on these. Um, sometimes you're going to run into issues where the insurance company wants to know what you have. They may not insure you if you have one of these. I always recommend to my clients consider upgrading, okay? And that's a good thing to say. What I'm gonna do while I'm here, I'm gonna take my infrared thermometer and I am gonna just test these to make sure they're not excessively hot. Now, the thing about these panels is they can just go on you in a minute. They can, it's not like they're gonna say, oh, I'm hot. And then all of a sudden they're gonna pop. They can be good and then all of a sudden they arc, and that's why there was a big problem with them. But Federal Pacific usually makes good panels. All right, at this point, um, there's no label on here, so I can't identify the amperage. I can't identify the type of wiring. There's a lot of things going on here. Um, it's not in our standards of practice to open this panel. I, sometimes I will, sometimes I won't. Today, we're not gonna open this panel because it's clearly um, not labeled, it's not safe, okay? So that's the way we're gonna write that up. That'll have to be fixed. 
And we're going to locate the meter, write that down on our report. Again, we're looking up the mass. The drip loops are kind of there. I don't know. Sometimes things aren't like where I would like them to be. But if this house has been this way since 1963, that's older than me. So, and I can say that. Um, as I'm going down, I'm checking the rails. And you know we like these to be graspable. If they're going down up here, it's OK. Um, we'll move on. But all right? Yeah. All right. Here's our receptacles here. Oh, you yeah. were asking if they were GFCI protected. And 10 to 1, these are not. Protected. Weatherproof, I guess. So, oh, yeah. And weatherproof? They look yes, like they are weatherproofed. OK. And they're fine. So I test both of them. Um, thank you, Rick DeBold. He was my mentor and told me, when you do receptacles, always test every one. So it, it's great to have great mentors. Um, the ramp looks good. We're going to go on ahead and go inside. Right. Hello, it's Julie with Empowered Home Inspections. And I have uh, boots. I'm going to take my shoes off. I'm comfortable that way, but I have these for you. And um, if you guys need boots, check out Inspector Outlet. I think we've got some pretty good ones there. So as we're going through here, oh, sorry, guys. As we're going through here, um, you're going to notice that we don't have all the receptacles are not three prong. Um, you know, again, this house is built in 62. So um, we're not going to argue with what works. Uh, it's just that we can recommend an upgrade to three prong. And what I do to test those. Tester out here. And I just make sure, well, it does work. Hot is hot. Neutral is not. Okay. Hot, not. Hot, not. We're happy with that. It's okay. It's not grounded, but we're going to recommend an upgrade on that. All right. As we come into we want to be checking all the switches, making sure they do what they're supposed to do. This is the outside one. Okay. Um, and then we'll check more receptacles. Again, we're, we're, we're slow on time here. Short on time, sorry. So I'm just, as I said before, you want to check every one. If there's something plugged into it, don't unplug it. Don't bother. That's okay. We don't need to check that one. Uh, but when you go through, do check as many as you can. And we're going to move on though because of time. So then I go through to check the appliances. This has um, items in it, so we won't be able to test that today. If there's items in there, you just document that. And I highly recommend that when you do take a picture, make sure you get a picture of the model number. No, that's, no. is that? Oh wait. Could be. Yep. That you're right. Good job. So just take a picture of that, um, and then. We're going to let that go for now. Um, we're going to test all of the cabinet doors. Make sure everyone does what it's supposed to do. We're going to do that throughout the whole kitchen. Then we're short on time. We're going to move on to this. This is uh, the fixtures. And I always, before I test the fixtures, I'm going to look down below to make sure there isn't any leaking going on like right now. And sometimes you're going to have to move these out of the way. I leave that up to you. If there's a lot of stuff there, I document. I can't look. I can't see. I don't move a lot of stuff. If it's one little thing where I don't feel like I can cause more damage, I'll move it. This is um, PVC pipe, and I'll note that. And um, sometimes I have had clients call me and ask me what we've got going on, and the insurance company wants to know. Now, something else I can see. Now, if you can see way back inside there, um, there's some stuff going on with the back of the wall there. So I'm going to note that there's um, evidence of prior water damage. Okay. And, and I know it looks like microbial growth. You don't ever want to say mold. Um, and the pipe's different where you have chrome. You've got um, metal and PVC. So we'll note the differences there. We just note it, that's all. We don't have to determine if it's good, bad, or indifferent. At this point, it's working and it's not leaking. Sorry, I'm looking for my flashlight. So we're good, we're good there. No, it doesn't look like there's any leaks. We're gonna check, make sure not it's hot. And I'm looking for leaks. 
running this. There's my hot. Now I'm going to check cold is cold, and I'm going to check this guy. Everything in here is to play with. You want to play with it? We're going to plug that up and then run it and listen. And look, and it looks great. So we got Chrome, PVC, and some other things going on in there, but that's the way it goes. We just know that. And I'm going to take a picture of the garbage disposal, and we're going to give that a little test. I got a question. Is there an air gap? Uh, this house actually has, there is not an air gap in here. So the uh, plumbing is going out through the roof, most likely, because no, there's no air vent valve. I'm assuming that's what they mean, air vent. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, is it this one? I turn it off and I turn it on again. I just want to look one more time. I don't see any leaks. We're good to go. I'm going to document that is. Oh, uh, air gap for the dishwasher hose. Oh, the high loop? So that's a good question. We move some stuff out of the way and see if we can find that. <laughs> I love it. You guys are on top of it. So there's so much stuff in the way. I really cannot tell. There's the supply line, the electrical. Oh yeah, there it is up there. It's up top, that gray right there. Oh, and so, and it runs to here. Here we go. So it goes way up high and comes back over to here. So yes, there is an air gap for the dishwasher. Um, you know, some of these dishwashers, actually most of them actually have a high loop on the back of them, but we don't know that we can't see that. So that's why we wanna see that in here. Thank you, that was a good catch. I guess if I don't see something that looks wrong to me, I don't always note it. All right, and while we're here, we're gonna check the window, make sure that opens. I love being short. There it is, check the screen, tap, tap. Looks good. Okay, window works. Um, spinning around, I would take a picture of the stove. Today we're not going to turn this on. Um, I typically will turn on the, or the oven. I said stove, but I'm in oven. Um, I would turn this on and just make sure it heats up. Um, we're going to bounce over to here though. We don't check portable units on refrigerators. So no, I've seen training on that on Internachi. So maybe that's something in the standards of practice that might change. But since this is a water ice machine, I kind of give it a quick look to make sure that there's nothing like corroding inside her. And then I always look behind it for that water line if I can see it. A lot of times you can't, sometimes you can. And it's something I'm gonna tell myself, make sure when you're in the crawl space or basement, look at that and make sure it's not leaking from below. Okay, we're gonna move on here though. We would check all these cabinets. We would check all this, these, just, give you an idea, get this started. Oh, you know, one thing I do definitely, if this was gas, I would definitely turn on my exhaust first. Okay, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself here for a minute. Um, and then just make sure these all are lighting up and they are. And I might do the oven, but we're short on time today and I don't wanna to forget to come back to shut, shut it off. So I'm not gonna test that at this time, okay? Okay, everything looks good here. We're moving on. Um, it's like, looks like this guy doesn't get used ever for a long time. How nice. Um, the thing to look on a fireplace is the damper. You just wanna make sure that that's operational, okay? And you know what, this is taped off, I see. I'd imagine that's because of the raccoon. So I'm gonna note that it was taped and I was unable to test it. No big deal. I'm just uh, looking at the hearth. I see there's a gap here where the, the grout um, is coming the way. So we're gonna recommend that gets repaired. The rest of it looks pretty nice. Um, okay. And we're gonna move on into the bathroom. Typically we would check all the outlets and the windows and Turning to our standards of practice, we only have to test 
a certain number of outlets or receptacles. And then we only have to open a certain number of windows, but I test them all. I usually, I usually this door sticks, we'll melt that. We're just checking all of these, that runs the kitchen. This runs outside. And at the same time, we're gonna test the door, make sure it works. And I'm happy with that, okay? All right, we're moving on into here. This is the bathroom. And I guess the door works. Okay, we're good there. Um, I'm gonna note that the floor is vinyl, rolled vinyl, and I'm gonna test all of the floors to make sure they work as they should. You don't have to get crazy about it, just make sure they don't fall out when you touch them. All right, same thing, we're gonna look at the fixtures here. Um, same thing, I'm gonna look under here first to make sure there's no leaking. I'm gonna document that it's chrome for the PVC trap. Um, I'm also looking at the uh, supply lines, and things like that. I'll see the shutoffs for the supply line. Interesting. They're probably on the inside, which is really odd. That's all right. If it's working, it's working. But it's hot. May take just a minute. Also, I like to check the water pressure. Um, using the spigot outside. We didn't get to that out. See now, there's water dripping here. So I'm gonna document that this fixture is leaky when the hot is turned on. Now let's see if it does the same when the cold is turned on. I don't see leaking out of either side. So I will definitely be specific about that. Um, and it looks like my stop isn't working either. Oh, uh, we have a question. Do you turn on water and flush at the same time to check pressure? I can. Uh, like I said, I usually check that outside on the spigot. Um, and here, I'll do that in the bathroom, though, where there's I've got the shower, not just the faucet mm -hmm. and the toilet. Okay. Okay. And then I come over here and we'll check this guy. Give it a wiggle with your legs. There's things on here. You take a decision on that one, guys. Um, don't move anything if you're not comfortable. I'm going to just take a quick look in there. I just always do. Sometimes I've seen some pretty heavy microbial growth, and I know that. I always get sick with asthma because of that stuff. So, if that completes the inspection here, um, sometimes people flush a couple of times. Sometimes they put stuff in there. I don't. I just flush. Oh, there it goes. That seemed to take an extra minute. I broke it. Let me check the light. <coughs> Excuse me. So here's the thing about this bathroom. It does not have GFCI. Not only that, it doesn't even have the street frog. So um, I am gonna note that on my report. I'm gonna recommend uh, GFCI protection in this bathroom and upgrade to that, okay? That's important. All right, and here again, we would just go through and test all these receptacles. Um, just gonna move on because we've got a lot of time. Checking the windows. Tap, tap on the screen, it's good. I don't see any holes in or any breaks. Put this guy back where he was. You know where we go, everything looks good in here. In the bedroom, you always check your closet doors. Okay, just a little movement. That's all you really gotta do, just to make sure when we do these, they're not gonna fall on us. Don't be shy, give it a try. Okay, light works, light works. We will test the receptacle. I'm going to check the door. Ah. Oh, fail. It sticks. I got to note that it sticks. Okay. We'll note that. All right. We're in the hallway now. Uh, we're not going to really go in here, but it's another bedroom. Same thing. Check the receptacles. Check the windows. Check the closet doors. If there's a fan, check that. And document if there's a fan. That's a, that's a nice feature. That's the door. Make sure it works. Okay. Do the same in that bedroom. I'm going to move on. Staying true to our time. Testing. All right. Our bathroom fan works. Yay. Um, sometimes it takes it just a minute. All right. This receptacle actually is um, three prong. So get out my tester and just test them. You, uh, 
Do you check the, the room door locks? Do I check the locks? Yeah, the do you doors? check the no. locks? No. Um, now, if the handle's loose or something like that, I will note that because one time I was in a house and the bathroom door actually I got locked in because it was loose and the lock locked me in. So yeah, that I would note. Um, okay, we're gonna look under here again. Note that it's chrome for um, the P-trap and just kind of looking for leaks before we do anything. Okay, and we're gonna say hot is hot. You know, if it doesn't pour out the way I want it to pour out, I'm not gonna worry about that. Sometimes things get dirty. We don't com comment too much on that. What I might tell my client is, you know, you can clean that. Um, okay, hot is hot. Stop works. Cold is cold. We're gonna go one more time down here and just take another look at while I drain this to make sure it's not leaking and it, I don't see any leaks, okay? So we're good there. Good enough. Check this cabinet. Everything's good there. Okay, we're gonna pull over here. And again, if you don't feel comfortable moving items, you do not have to. Flush that. Make sure it just works on its own. And then what we'll do. Our windows. Check the shower. Okay. All right. Um, so what I'm looking for here is just to make sure that the caulking is good and sealed along here. Um, I see there's chips in the tub, so I'm going to note that in my report. And if it looks like it's soft at all, I'm going to touch it. But everything looks pretty good in here. Um, so on my shower walls look good. I'm happy with that. Bathtub just has a few little spots in it. And I'm also looking in the front of the bathtub to make sure that's sealed along there. I think that's great. Now we can test this. Make sure you cover yourself so you don't get wet. You never know how it's gonna go. Sometimes I forget to check the shower head and okay, hot is hot, cold is cold. Let's check the test out diverter. And it's mostly working. You know, I don't worry if there's huge rips. If it doesn't um, stop dripping, then I know that in my report that the stop the river is not working. Let's go ahead and flush the toilet and we'll turn on the water. I don't see any pressure loss there, so that's awesome. Everything seems to be working good here. We can move on. Oh, well, let's double check. So I'm going to turn the fan off. I do like to have that on when I do my tests because that, whoops, sorry. Not, uh -oh. not the light. <laughs> Which one is it? There we go. Sorry about that, guys. So I, I just, I want to listen to how this drains. I always run the fan though because uh, that does help with moisture. So we're going to listen. Oh, the toilet's the room that I can tell. Um, Sean asks, could you say possible mold, mold growth if you see suspicious growth on a surface? No, never use the M word. Okay, so what, what you can say when I say the M word, I mean mold. What you can say is microbial growth, or you can say, um, you know, it is mildewed. Because in order to know if it's mold, you have to get that tested, Absolutely. right? Yeah, you you have, to, have to go to a lab, right? You don't know if it's mold. And, and mold really is, there's a difference between mold and fungus and um, and even just dirt. So mm. um, and we're done in here. So we're just gonna put this back the way we found it. I'm gonna check this side just one more time, just cause it was kind of, everything looks good. I just making sure I don't see evidence of leaks or anything going on. Looks good, looks good. Great, that's great, it's beautiful. 62, baby. <laughs> <laughs> All right, out we go, down the hall. Um, so uh, doorbell, here's our adaptive cooler. 
So we're going to go ahead up above is where it's going to come through. And I'm going to turn the pump on and listen for the pump. There it is. It's very subtle, but you can- It's subtle, it's good enough for me. I'm not really checking to see if it's gonna cool me off like right now. I'm just checking to make sure that these function as they're intended. And that's a vent, an event, and we're off. It's all we have to do, just to make sure it works, okay? Um, this thermostat, I'm gonna take a picture of this before I touch it. Always take a picture first, so you know where to go back to. And then um, we'll come back to this thermostat to test the heater and everything else that's downstairs right now. We're gonna keep moving with testing other things. Um, doors were. Sean asks, are these swamp coolers common in Colorado? <laughs> Excuse me. Yes, they are. Um, we're a dry climate, so we kind of like that. And this door is sticky. I'm gonna leave it. Um, they work best too if you can open a window in the back side of the house just a little bit. And then when you run it, it draws all that air to the back and it cools really nice. So being in a dry climate helps. I have one more question about that. Mark asked, is there a minimum outside temperature to turn on the swamp cooler? That's a good question. Um, you know, I'm gonna say you don't, you wouldn't really run it if, well, it's not true. A lot of people like things cold. So the dangers are not there that are there for an air conditioning unit. Um, I, I've just never had anybody tell me they've had any problems. All that runs that is just a water pump. So whatever the guidelines are for that, you would have to read and see what the recommendations are. Um, uh, doesn't really answer your question, but I would say most people don't run them if it's 60 degrees or less anyway. 65 is the benchmark for running a lot of equipment. Um, something I didn't know while I was looking at that though is the cracks in the ceiling. So I'll just note those um, evidence of movement. I would recommend sealing and monitoring for more movement. I'm not concerned that I don't think we need a structural engineer to look at this. I just see that um, there might have been some issues going on here. Um, could even have been due to I don't know, but it could be just anything. Uh, but I don't see other issues going on that's gonna make me too concerned. I'll note it for sure, okay? And um, now we're gonna just look at the other side here of the fireplace, same thing. I'll recommend that this be repaired on the hearth. And also I cannot test the um, draft because uh, that's not the word I'm looking for, but I can't test that lever just because it's taped off and it looks pretty clean a lot of times i have to recommend on fireplaces to have a chimney sweep uh before use so um another question going back to the swamp cooler uh brianna asks would you run a test on the swamp cooler when the temperature is below freezing no uh no in fact you need to have those disconnected if it's going to get below freezing you would disconnect those because a water supply line goes to those to fill them with water and then they cool the um, filters and that's how it cools everything. And anybody knows that you have to winterize those before the first frost because that, that pipe itself that supplies the water could crack and cause a leak. Okay. So we're just gonna check the windows here. Um, I'm gonna make sure, oh, there is a, another one up top. Um, before you start handling things, make sure you're uh, observant enough to know if there's more than one latch. You don't want to break anything. So that works. And latch that back the way we found it. Go. Okay, screen's good. Um, same thing on the other side. We're just going to move on because we're running low on time here. Okay. I'm going to note that um, the floor is carpeted in there. I'll note that the floor is wood in here. And um, looks good. So the next thing we gotta go do is the garage. I think we're, oh no, hey, we didn't even get downstairs. Mike. Yeah, let's go, let's go downstairs. See, I'm gonna set the garage. That is the one thing I will say for us home inspectors that we need to debunk this. We need to not be in such a rush to get out of a house. <laughs> I know the agents love it when we can be there for an hour, but we really need more than that to look at things. Okay, testing the handle as we go down. Curious about what this is. I think this is for laundry. 
it's not opening, so it's not a safety concern. Okay, testing the steps as we go. All right, and this, all oh, on our standards practice, we need to locate our water shutoff. So this is our water shutoff. Okay. And it also, it is not in our standards of practice to turn this. We don't test that. We just note that its location is here. And I'm noticing as I'm walking across the floor, there's quite a crack here. And I remember this house I said was 62, right? Um, and the thing I'm gonna note about this crack is that it be sealed. Um, not too concerned about the rest of the house because the thing is I can't really even see because it's all finished. I couldn't tell you if there's cracks in the walls or anything like that. But when I was walking around the foundation, I don't know if you guys noticed, but it looked pretty solid. So I'm not too concerned about that. This is some movement that probably happened quite a long time ago. We'll note it as such. Again, we would test our um, receptacles that we can see. And, um, and fireplace again. Now this guy looks really good down here. Um, just gonna look underneath, make sure that looks good. And again, I would recommend this one be clean before use. And let's see if we can actually, oh, we can test that guy. So if you saw that, so I can move him forward and back. Um, we just got a question about the floor tiles. Um, let me pull it up. Anthony asked, are those nine inch floor tiles asbestos? Uh, I would have, they would have to be tested. Mm -hmm. um, chances are they may have asbestos in them. So they're not a concern as long as they're untouched. So they can be covered. Or if you want them out, you have to have a company that does um, mitigation for asbestos and they would be tested first and then removed. Um, they're safe, they're fine like they are. Uh, so I don't worry about that. I do tell my client if they wanna know that, there's another small crack there. Um, you know, I would tell them if you if you decide you want to do something with this, make sure you have that tested first. Okay. Uh, look at this gem. Where's the light? Oh, look at this light. It's so wild. <laughs> 60s on my friend. Okay. What have we got? What is this thing? This hmm. looks like a light. Well, you turn it on. It does, but look, there's plumbing going into it. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, wow. You turn that knob. I know, but it's not plugged Oh, in. yeah, it's not plugged in. And we don't plug things in, but I sure would love to. Oh, we got to test the door. Come on, we got to test this refrigerator. That's against our standards of practice, but we're going to just look at it anyway. Oh, my goodness. This is so amazing. Look at that. Oops, sorry. Okay. Make sure you get that baby closed back up. What does this do? Something. Oh, I wouldn't say it's against the uh, standard practice to to, to uh to inspect the refrigerator. It just goes. You're just going beyond the SOP when you're when you are inspecting the refrigerator. You can do it. It just uh, exceeds yeah. the. Well, standard we're just practice. taking a quick look. Yeah. As if there was a threat of water leaking. Or if we saw saw anything abnormal, of course we'd go check it. Yeah. So this is cool. We definitely want to check this. It's this is water going through here. So anytime there's plumbing, we want to look at it because we like to look at things like that. Um, old copper, that's amazing. And we're going to just test. And uh, I'd like to know if hot is hot and cold is cold. I'd like to know that. I don't know if it's going to, yeah, it's warming up. All right. Yep, hot is hot. Okay. That's neat. I'm looking around here. It looks all right. I don't see water damage. This looks uh, uh, but you know, it's just not clean. And it's probably just been sitting here for a while, no big deal. I don't think that's a real threat. No. Nope. So that's okay. What um, about the sink, like the body of this, this the tub here of the sink, like the, this yeah, marking? I think that's just, you know, good old baking soda, to get that out. I don't feel like that's a threat either. The thing I was looking at was it doesn't need to be sealed around here, and I don't think it does. So that's pretty cool. Um, we just make sure the door works, this door works. Um, oh, this is so cool. More copper piping here. We're just kind of looking at that, looking for leaks. And um, that looks good. Let's move on. I have another, we have another question about asbestos. Uh -huh. 
Um, let's see. Speaking of the asbestos, could the homeowner fill the crack safely or would you recommend a professional do the asbestos? Probably a professional, right? Yeah. That's two questions. Filling a crack oh. is filling a crack, but asbestos is different. You mean, is there a problem that they might be in contact with asbestos while filling the crack? That's probably it. Yeah, it's not a problem. By now that's all worn away. The asbestos really is in the glue. And so I don't I don't feel like that's a threat. If the homeowner wants to fill that crack, they sure could. They wouldn't need to have a, uh, anything done with that. Um, I guess if you're a home inspector, Ali says that she's, or Ali says that he's a uh, um, certified mold and a, he's certified and mold and asbestos. Is it okay to offer the test? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, That's a great thing to do. You bet. Good question. Um, okay, we're just looking in here, the walls and the ceiling. And this is just a room. I don't see a closet in here. I'm not sure I would classify this as a bedroom. It depends on how it's listed. Uh, I do see some prior water damage here, though. So we're going to get out the trusty moisture meter. First, I'm going to feel it and make sure it doesn't feel wet. And it doesn't. But I'm just curious, is this new or old? Yeah, it's only 4.5. That's dry. Put a bottle on up here. Same. So this is old. This is not wet. You know, we all like it to see a double digits. I think 12, if you um, please do the research on that, home inspectors. But um, I don't like to see a double digit. So if it's above nine, I, I um, record that. But there actually is documentation on that on Internachi, I just don't know what off the top of my head. Sorry, guys. Yeah. Um, but I mean, that just looks like that's been there for a while. So we're okay with that. And we're okay with that. It looks like there might be some over here too. So I'll document this. <coughs> Excuse me. I'll document the little um, crack in the drywall and might have something to do with this because this is the spigot on the outside, must have had been some repairs, so I'll document that they need to put um, a panel here or um, reef or fix the drywall. I would do an access panel is what I would do. Um, also, we would want to test the window, but we're going to move on. Okay, just note that we should test the window. Oh, lots to see in here. I love looking at the utility room because you can look in the ceiling and see the floor and look at the joists. These are beautiful, these are old. So some things we got going on in here, um, our junction boxes need to have cover plates, okay? Some of this wiring is older. Eventually you'll recognize that. We don't care about the low voltage wire here that's not in a box, that's low voltage. And Which one is, what is To it the like? right over here in the gray with the, the white tips. Okay. I got my light on there. That one, that's low voltage. Yep, that one. And that's okay. That that must be like doorbell or phone. Actually, it looks thicker, so it's probably phone. But um, these need to have covers on these junction boxes. Here's an air admittance valve that I thought you were asking about earlier that I got confused on a bit. Um, that's appropriate. That's down here. That, that means that the, the washing machine um, is not actually going outside with the rest of the plumbing. Um, and that's fine. And these are the shut off the hookups. So we can look at those. We don't have to test anything. Uh, we certainly don't turn these on enough. We don't have to test the appliances. That's something you can ask the client, are you keeping this? Um, and then if they say, yes, I always do test because if the, there's a water leak or anything like that, I wanna know um, that's not in the standards of practice to go that far. Uh, but here's the thing, just be consistent. You know, If you're gonna do it that way, just always ask. Um, that way you're consistent. Okay, I see there's been some repairs on the floor. Um, that's gonna, you know, make me think, hmm, what's going on here? I'm gonna look for other issues if there might've been some because of that, but I'm not seeing anything necessarily. Um, drawing me over to the water heater now. Everything, I'm looking for the shutoff for the gas. Um, I'm looking for um, the temperature pressure relief valve. Now it's missing its discharge pipe. Uh, we need to see a discharge pipe on here that needs to be no closer than two inches to the floor. 
no higher than six inches, really. Uh, it doesn't have a pan on it. It's not sitting in a pan, I should say. It's okay, it doesn't have to, unless it's on an upper floor or if it's on a floor that's gonna cause damage, so wood floor, um, then it would need to have a pan. Um, we document the size of this water tank and put that in our report according to our standards practice. And we're also gonna look at all these attachments, the water supply. Shut off is on the cold, that's appropriate. Drafting looks good. There's no evidence of back drafting. Sometimes these will get rusty looking if that's going on. We got a few things tapped into here. Sometimes when they disconnect and don't use anymore, like this guy is right here, it, it's good, just leave it. You know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Uh, do watch these though, they do tend to leak. Um, but that must have been for um, a refrigerator quite a while back. And then this one must be the refrigerator now. Also, you've got a humidifier, in-home humidifier. Um, thank you, Dry Colorado. And there's a lot of things going on, but everything looks okay. There's some corrosion here. I would note that. The thing about corrosion, if you want to get over here, sometimes it acts as a sealer. So if you see it, don't touch it, okay? Just leave corrosion alone and tell your client the first sign of a drip, just replace it. Until then, it's really, um, depending on how bad the corrosion is, you have to decide that, but that's comes with experience, I suppose. So these we don't test, I'm just gonna document that this is here. Um, let's come around the corner, looking at all the ductwork looks good. Now this must be the shutoff for the furnace. I always love when the emergency shut off is out of reach. Like why? Yeah. <laughs> but it's okay. We don't have to shut it off in a hurry. I'm just looking at all the pipes. So we have duct tape here. I don't like that they sell the duct tape with the duct work, but that's not the appropriate tape. And that's gonna eventually uh, break away. So I'm gonna recommend foil tape. Um, the recommended duct tape for that. And they could go right over it. They don't want it. I would tell them, don't take that off. Just go right over it. Okay, this is for the furnace. Nice. It's kind of dark in here. So we'll just um, add a little light to the subject. What do you say? Everybody doing all right? Here we go. All right. Um, yeah, before we get to the heater, um, we have a question about the, the dryer over here. Is, okay. uh, is that dryer vented? Oh, that's a good one. I'm going to tell you the truth. It is not. It has not been since 1962. Um, and I'll, I, I do take pictures of that and I document that the dryer vent there. It's not here. Hasn't been here. She's never had one I asked. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? So I will recommend on my report that a dryer vent be installed um, to the outdoors. I will make sure that's in my report that a vent be installed to the outdoors. Um, yeah, and you know, what's amazing is you look, there's really not moisture issues. Um, you know what I mean? Things you would look for um, if that was the case, but that's pretty spectacular. I would document that there's a crack here um, you know, if it's a dime, it's time. Okay. If it's like the size of a dime, it's time to do something. So, um, seal it. And the fact that this is by the window, uh, I'm not too alarmed just because that is common. It can happen. Uh, it's, it is a significant crack. I would recommend it gets sealed. Um, I don't know that they necessarily need to have a structural engineer to do that. I think, um, a contractor can can do that and then I would watch it for movement now if it moves again I would definitely get someone in here to look at things and see why um, but I think that's probably what's going on there um, again I would note that the window is not really accessible because of, if you look underneath um, the deck is there anyway so we can't we can't use this window to get out uh, I would note in the other room, I wanted to mention that to you, the window is higher than 44 inches. I would also recommend an egress window, uh, just recommendation. Can't, you know, can't tell them they have to have it because this house was built in 62. Um, 
so I got distracted from the first, I'll come back to it, but I'm noting any of the cracks and I would just say minor cracks in the wall, I'd recommend they be sealed, um, looking in under the stairwell. It's appropriately covered. We like to see these covered with drywall under the stairwell. I think even in training in the, uh, on InterNACHI, they recommend that when you go through the course, it tells you that. Um, something about the floors that I was noticing also, as these are floating floors, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with floating floors in a basement, but with a floating floor, it should have a, a second two by four here. And then these um, wall, <laughs> I got lost, lost my terminology, but anyway, you know what I'm talking about. These um, studs need to go to that board. And then between that board and this board, you would nail a nail in between each stud. Um, and that makes it a floating floor so that when things move, the walls can move. Um, and that just helps with upstairs cracks in the, in the walls and the ceiling, cracks everywhere, mm -hmm. just eliminate the wall. Okay, we'll note the crack on the floor. Again, should seal that up. Okay. furnace. Um, we're going to take a picture of this before we touch it. And uh, there's talk about... <coughs> before we get to the heater, one last question about the uh, or you're just covering. Is there a drain in the floor here? Um, sorry about that. I think that's here. You know, it's out, oh, yep, yep. There it is. Yep. Good question. You guys are awesome. Have a drain in that basement. Awesome. Okay. The things I'm going to do here is just kind of look at everything and um, note if anything is dirty and it's dirty. Okay. So um, also I'm going to look down inside, make sure nothing looks out of place. Uh, I'm going to recommend this gets clean. I'm going to take a picture of the model number and I'll have that uh, if they decide they want to know how old it is. I'll go through the time to make sure I get that information for them. Um, the other thing I'm going to look at is the filter and the filter looks clean. Uh, I don't know if you noticed the problem here, however, there's a couple things going on. It's too long. So I'm going to recommend the correct size of filter. That's always written usually. Um, either in the unit or on the back of the um, cover. Cover. Thank you. So anyway, I would recommend a smaller filter and then I would recommend covering this area because then the uh, dirty air won't get in here, which I bet if we take this off, it's probably dirty in here too. Um, you know, I mean, it's not terribly bad. It's not rusted out. It's, it's not bad. I would just recommend that. And you know, really furnaces, and you it's up to you if you want to put that in your reports. You know, you can recommend they get serviced yearly. Um, nice recommendation for someone who isn't first time buyer or don't they don't know or not familiar. So um, I really want to turn the furnace on and look at this, but everything. At this point, it's going to need to be cleaned and serviced. So my job is done. Uh, condensing unit. Here's what kind of furnace is this? Like what efficiency? Like, do you know? Like, uh, well, I don't know. It's not, it is, um, I don't know. It's a Whirlpool. I don't know how they're classified. Okay. That's about the best I can tell you. We'd have to look up the model number. Hmm. Okay. Look at a few more things since we got a nice light here. All right, let's go take a let's go outside. I think we're done in here. I think we got everything. Um, okay, we would I would actually take some time and, and check the um, I would run the uh, furnace and check 
the return, and I would also check the heat. Okay, we'll just uh, turn this off. Oh, we missed one. I'll come or back. We'll come back later. Checking the stairs again, checking the handle. Okay. Am I right on time? I think so, yeah. We have our little helper still waiting for us here. <laughs> okay. We're going out to the garage. Oh, that will complete our inspection. All right, guys, let's work our way. Oh, what have we got here? This is kind of a fun little thing. Uh, 60s. Anybody have a guess on what that is? You can put it in the chat. All right, we're looking in the garage. And we are going to note on our report that this is run by a Automatic garage door opener. Sorry, good. Good. automatic garage door opener. That's something you need to document in your report. Um, I know that the door, <laughs> we have to turn it on and off in here. So, um, oh, the garage yeah. door. So, we're oh, going to wow. test it. I want to close it up now. <laughs> oh, that's actually good. Oh. The cat, well, wait, that, that. That's there's our helper testing it. All right. The eyes work, right? The eyes work. Because the cat just went through the uh, through the eyes. Awesome. I got back. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Yeah. So things we're looking at uh, when we first come into the garage with the door down is we're going to the springs. They should have a safety tab on them or a caution tab, you know, stating their safety value, whatever. I don't really even know what else on that tab. I just know that that's something to look for. If it's not there, I don't know if it, I don't care if it's working right. I do look and make sure there's not a anything else going on. Sometimes I've seen electrical wires going across these for some reason, but this is just the low voltage for the eyes. That's okay. The cable looks good. I'm looking at that. I'm looking at the wheels. I'm gonna touch it. You know, a lot of what we do is home inspections is supposed to be a visual inspection. You know what we see, but I like to touch things too. So, and we have to check it on a few levels. So, one thing we've checked first is to make sure that safety release works. You don't want to get trapped in the top. One time we had an elder lady that had to call the fire department because she couldn't get out. Okay. And I think that works good and it's holding. I'm gonna turn the button here, push the button, and away we go. Which way? There. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Try one more time, guys. That's what I like to do that is outside of standards of practice. I'm going to open this up and um, So um, I like to stop it when it's coming down. This has the eyes and they're fine. They're a little high. Um, I'll just give it a um, I like to have the reverse back up. The auto reverse is not working on this. Sometimes it's just an adjustment on the garage door opener. So I'll know that the auto reverse did not work. Now here's how you really should do this, is you should put a two by four underneath there of some type, and then let it come down on that two by four and see if it will come back. Um, I just, especially for the guys, I recommend that because um, there's a little truth in that, you're a little strong, and 
For me, I can just give it a, a push and not knock things out of whack. But for you guys, sometimes your little push is really hard. So I would recommend using the two by four. Okay. Um, I think everything works good on that. The cover's on the light. We're going to open it back up again just so we have some light. Okay. We're going to look in the attic. Um, see, do we have anything else? The garage? We need to check out the, the windows, the walls. The um, Greg asked, is there a the is the air gap gap or is the air gap in the bottom of the closed garage door a defect? There was a yes, little gap. It is. Yes, it is. And we'll notice that when we go outside after we're done looking at the attic, we'll document that there's some damage on the outside over there. And um, you know, some of that is just the the sinking of the garage floor. And you know, that can <laughs> sorry. That that can be remedied, but um, there you go. Yeah, I'll just do that. <laughs> yep. We'll just we'll just recommend. Um, we'll just note that. A lot of times we just note things. Okay, we can let them decide what they want to do about it. We don't have to have an answer to everything. We just want to document everything that we see. Okay. Good. Good question. And so the attic is in the garage here. Yeah. This is the attic that we're about to go. And, and you'll make sure you put down your report where attic access entry is. Okay. The other thing you need to put on your report according to the standards of practice is what type of insulation there is. And also we like to document the depth of the insulation, okay? We don't document the R value. Uh, we don't determine that. And you don't have to determine that, okay? So- You wanna get the light turned on and then I'll hand you my Actually, screen. what I do, if you don't mind, I'll show them without the light first. Okay. Would that be okay? Yeah, sure. All right, so it's always good practice to kind of take a look without the light on, because what you're looking for is, is, is there unwanted, areas that are open and I'm not seeing other than at the gabled end over there that's appropriate uh this was the um dormer that we saw out out and the dormer back over there okay we're going to spin around over here look real quick um again gabled end is open it's very comfortable in here uh you know the um garage area does not have insulation it doesn't have to be okay the area over the garage does not have to be insulated uh, this is the old rock wall insulation um, we don't want to be in this anymore and we have to be because it's very itchy and kind of ugly so we'll do an estimate of size on how deep it is typically i would walk over there and i would look at that chimney area I see there's been some repairs. So I'm really curious uh, on another time when we're not crunched, I'm gonna go over there and look at that and document what I find such as if there's any cracks uh, and I'll document that there has been um, prior repairs made. And that should be good. I'm looking at the rafters and we'll notice the little gap there for our ridge vent, that's appropriate. Um, Sheathing looks good. I don't see evidence of water leaks. Okay, I think this all looks pretty good. Also, we're looking at the vent pipes. Okay, duct, <laughs> more duct tape. I would recommend the appropriate tape or sealant be used on all of the ducting. Okay, I'm gonna give this phone back to Jacob and we'll see what else we got for you guys. Okay, there you go. Thank you so much. Uh, I don't see a walkway to the chimney. Is there one or how, how would you get to it? Yeah, you have to be really careful. If you're gonna walk in the attic, which is not required of you, if you decide to walk in the attic, you have to be sure to check your footing first and make sure you're walking on the two by fours or two by sixes, whatever they used. Um, so if there isn't a walkway to the chimney, you don't go, like don't try I to don't get over. It. Yeah. That's why I did it today. You know, one day I'll be curious, so I'll go check it out. Um, but um, if they, if the client will have me back, I can offer to come and look at that for them. And, um, but otherwise, no, if it's not safe. I've heard inspectors who fall to the roof. You know what, it can happen, just fix it. It's not a big deal, don't worry about it. You know, you were just trying to be extra thorough. It's not, you know, anything to be too worried about. Um, 
Sean asks, uh, do you walk in the attic if the insulation covers the ceiling joists? Do you walk if the insulation covers the ceiling joists, I guess? Okay, so it's a good question. Um, you really shouldn't, uh, depending. Um, I, if I've been in, a, it, now it depends. If I've been in a home that I know has recently been remodeled and I see wires that are, don't look right to me, I have gone into attics. I've actually crawled deep into the attic and taken pictures on the other side where electrical has been just taped together. It doesn't even have a wire net at the end of it. So I was glad I did because I was documented, able to document that. That that's a safety concern. So it's your call as a home inspector. You have to decide, you know, what you're going to do on that. But just document and take pictures and um, be very careful. Uh, Anthony asks, is there a bath? Is there a bathroom venting outside? I guess in the attic or? Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about that for a second. Um, yeah, it was in the back, it, it's on the other side of the chimney. I mean, let's be honest, I know that because I've been in this attic, but um, I would I would definitely look for that. Great. We saw that on the top of the roof, actually. We saw that, um, yeah. The stack, right? We did. Yeah. yeah. Think about that. Anything else, guys? Um, there was a question earlier about your method of inspecting the exterior. Is there like a method that you do uh, walking around the house? Like, do you walk clockwise or counterclockwise typically when you're inspecting? Yes. Um, yeah. You know, and this is something I've learned is um, sometimes I double track, I double back. And I, I really, I'm trying to get away from that. The program that I use allows me to double back in the program so I don't have to. I can document on several things without having to walk back and forth, which is okay too. You just make sure you're observant when you look. You might have missed something the first time. I definitely do try to stay in a pattern though, because otherwise you're doing a lot of back and forth and you know, that's- And what program do you use? I use Spectacular. Um, Aaron, the, the guy that wrote the program does the best support ever, he's amazing. Um, I would highly recommend you check it out. I got started on it because it was paid for use. And at the time, building my business, I couldn't afford the big chunk that it took to um, pay for a complete membership for one year. And he didn't care. He's like, you know what, pay for use and works great. Great, one other question going back to the attic, Greg asked, uh, so because of the blown, insul blown in insulation, is that a defect if there is no walkway to service or inspect up there in the chimney, venting, electrical, et cetera? Absolutely not. Not a defect at all. It is not um, not required of a home inspector to walk in the attic. We can do um, observations from the attic access and, and be just sufficient. Um, remember, we're just looking for things that are, you know, if we see evidence of water leaks, we document that. We don't have to make sure that it's documented throughout the whole area, you know, so. Um, do you ever use a drone at all? I guess for inspecting. No, I don't. Yeah, it is an option um, for you all because uh, you're you're not required to go onto the roof, but um, a lot of inspectors do try to get up there. Um, I am actually um, coming out with a drone video soon um, this month. So uh, I shot a drone roof inspection with an inspector down in Boulder. So just keep an eye out on YouTube and it should be coming out sometime this month. Yeah, drone webinar would be popular. I think we did a drone webinar. Um, I know Ben might have had someone from the drone industry on. Just check uh, nachi.org slash webinars. Let's see, any any last last minute questions? Do you use infrared on um, most of your inspections? I do have an infrared camera. I did in um, a high rise downtown Denver once um, and we were able to see a really dark spot in the shower, uh, but here's the thing, I couldn't determine if where, where it was coming from because the shower was completely sealed and um, it was a new build. So, well, not a new build, it was a remodel. Uh, so I just, I showed her what I had. I'm not trained in it necessarily. I haven't taken the training. For infrared certification? No, I, I really need to do that. Okay. Um, but I do have a camera, I use it for fun and I do show people, you can definitely look and see where the insulation may be um, lacking and, and, and you can see water, but you really need to know what you're looking at. So I don't claim to know, I use it for fun and just 
And that would be good to also use when you're testing the AC and the heating, right? To look at vents to make sure that vents are looking properly um, yes. as well. It would be beneficial. Did we identify the clean out to do a sewer scope downstairs? We did not identify the clean out. Um, you know, I typically have, uh, I hire pipe one to do my sewer scopes and it's documented in that. So, um, it's not something that's required on your standards of practice to document that. You do need to document where the gas shutoff is, where the water shutoff is, and the electrical shutoff. So those are the three things that you really do need to document. But it is helpful. Good question. Uh, Greg asks, what kind of light are you using for this your inspection? I couldn't tell you. My husband found this on It's a Honeywell. And you know, it charges using your phone. Um, do you know the, the kind of light? What is this? What, what the it's style? A, it's a bar. It's an LED bar and it just it turns on those few things. But I, I really like it because I it does, I can also touch things if I'm not sure it's soft, you know. It's got a rubber end, it. yeah. Yeah, it doesn't damage anything. Everything you do, just be careful, you know, at first. Always careful. But yeah, Honeywell. Couldn't tell you. Do you carry like those it. everywhere with your on your inspections? Everywhere. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, this is my. This is my friend because also I can pick it you know, set it here. When I have my flashlight, I I use this so much. I'll just to kind of look at things. Um, you know, just it's good to have things like right at hand for me. I haven't gotten I can't do the belt thing. I just don't like a belt. All right, guys. Well, I think that's about that's gonna wrap things up for us. Um, I hope you all enjoyed this uh home inspection, this, this webinar home inspection. Um, like I said, if any of you all are in Colorado and think you're up for the task of uh, doing one of these with me, just let me know. Um, I'm around and uh, these are very popular. Uh, just to let you know, there will be a recording. It will be up on our YouTube channel and nachi.org slash webinars. Uh, again, I'm Jacob with InterNACHI. That's the International Association of Certified Home Inspectors. And we'll see you on the next inspection.